I love it. What's your drink? It, uh, so this is a uh, sparkling water from Mexico. Okay. Topo Chico. I went. I went hard. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I went with a vodka tonic. I would. I would have joined you. Uh, you know. Yeah, but you got a show before work. So yeah, we're at the theater. Cheers. Cheers. This is where you're performing in what? About three hours from now. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, three hours. Cap Tell Capital me. Theater. Capital We've been Theater. Here, been here before. Portchester, New York, right outside of New York City. How did you? What is your story? How did you get? Here. I have no idea. You know, it, it, it really is amazing uh, that do, doing something that you just love to do yeah. can turn into your life. You didn't plan it that way. You know, I didn't. I didn't plan it. I just sort of hoped and kept kept trying to just do what I like to do. So you grew up where? What was this, the town you grew up in? You know, I grew up uh, in in uh, the Klein community in North Harris County in, in the Houston area. Outside Houston, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's not that's a pretty rural place, right? Well, it was. It was. It was. I always joke that uh, you know I grew up in the country, now I live in the city, and I haven't moved. <laughs> but it's it's kind of true. Houston's really grown yeah. out to us. It's become a full-on suburban area, and and uh, it's kind of heartbreaking because the old old way of life is gone. All the farmers sort of cashed out and, yeah. and sold to development companies. and it's the same and in my hometown. Uh, it's, uh, the old apple orchard is now a uh, housing development. Yeah, exactly. So did you grow up with a guitar? Did you take lessons? Did you, I'm assuming guitar was the first instrument. Well, it was. It was. My, my mom uh, asked me one day in, when I was in second grade if I wanted to take guitar lessons and, uh, because my second grade teacher's husband was teaching guitar lessons. And so I but said, sure, I said, yeah, why not? I mean, we, we lived 28 miles north and west of downtown. She would drive home in the in the Houston traffic, which was. Well, was, she'd come home from work. She'd come home from work, pick me up, take me back into town. My dad would stay. That's dedication. In, 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 it's real, real dedication. Are they? Are your parents your heroes? You know, they. Well, I tell you, they. I I am so grateful for the way they. Uh, they they both worked a lot, and because of that, it it seemed like when they weren't at work. They never did anything without me. So you go off to college, Texas A&M, right? Texas A&M. And is it true that you, by the way, have a, a journalism degree? Is that true? Yes, ma'am. And German? German. Do you still speak? A little. I bet you speak a little. A lot. If I if I were drinking something stronger than water, <laughs> yeah, maybe my German would, would get the better. German would come out. And and so I was reading that you go off to college, and as you said, you started doing a, a few gigs, right? A few kind of what, like coffee houses or something? And it, well, there was a there was a, a you know a student union committee at yeah. at the at the, uh, at the, at the uh, Texas A&M that that was a, a coffee house committee. We had, it was it was essentially a, a forum for student performers, and we had performances every Friday and Saturday night. And so I found out about that and, and joined up, and and all of a sudden I was I was in charge of of booking. And I didn't know anything about it, but they gave me a list of names. I started calling people every week and begging them to come play. We had 30-minute sets from 8 to 12 every Friday and Saturday. And it was called the Basement Coffee House uh, because at one time, it wasn't in the basement. I was confused by the whole thing, but it had one time it apparently had been in the basement. Okay. But, but uh, I'd, call, I'd call people and beg them to play. And, and uh, I got to know, and what was great about it was I got to know people you made there a bunch at school. Of musicians. Exactly. Yeah. And so it was, the association was wonderful and encouraging. So then, what, what's, is there a point in your life when you look back now where you thought, this is what I'm going to do? No. no. No, and I'm still hoping it works out. The, the, it's, you know, working for yourself is an insecure thing. Um, my first record came out in 1986, 31 years ago. And I, never in 1986 would I have thought in 2017 that, still that I'd still be doing this. I mean, it's just miraculous. I, I get to work with the smartest, most talented people that I've met over the course of my life. Most of the people that I work with in the band I've, I've played with you know, since the 70s and 80s. You tour in different ways, right? You, sometimes you tour with just a couple instruments, but here you're with your l large band. Large band. You know, Why are they large, by the way? They're, because they're numerous. Okay. It's nervous. You know, I have some arrangements that are, they're, they're blues songs with some horn arrangements, and, and sometimes early on people would refer to, to, to the music as big band, but I, I would think, you know, it's not big band. I mean, big band's a very specific thing, and it's not big band. And so uh, as I looked around the rehearsal room one day, and my, my producer at MCA Records, Tony Brown, asked me what the name of the band was. I said, I think it's a large, it's a large band. So it's just because we're, we're yeah. there are a lot of us. But, but yeah, there, we're 14 on stage this summer. 
I, what I want to know is what's the secret? Like, how did you do this for all these years? You know, what's your secret sauce to keep a band going for? Thirty years. You know, well, first of all, I'm, you know, all the, everybody who plays in the band is a solo artist, really, in, in his own right. Uh, e either they make their own records or they play on sessions. Right. Uh, session musicians. I'm just grateful that they they stop what they're doing for a couple of months every year and come on the road with me. Uh, it's 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 the summertime is really when we can sustain the large band, getting to play. Uh, yeah. Some of the the outdoor venues that sort of prop up prop up our our, our budget because it's you know it's it's quite an effort. To, we're almost thirty people with buses and trucks and yeah. all that, carry yeah. our own sound and all that. So you say you do what you love. You said that before that it, it, it's not really a job when it's something you actually enjoy doing. That's true. What's the best part of being Lyle Lovett? Oh my goodness, uh, the uh, you know I my my entire life is uh, has been such a blessing. And uh, you know, being being raised by parents who are so thoughtful and so caring and so loving, uh, I still have my mom. She's 87 years old. Um, you know, being f feeling supported by people you care about, feeling feeling loved by people you care about, uh, long friendships and associations. That, that, that's the. I think that's the the best any of us can hope for and that's certainly those are certainly the best parts of my life the people that I that I that I've come to know and the people that I, you know the people that you work with that those are really important people in your life because you spend a lot of time with sure. them sure and it's it's really important to work with people that um, you know that you care about and, and have your back and then that do and and whose back you have as well yeah. and 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 I you know I've been lucky to 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 make friendships like that and and uh, uh, you know that that really is the it's the people that you get to spend your life with are the, always the best part of your life. Music industry's changed so much over the last thirty years. I, I wonder what your advice would be for somebody who's sitting out there, you know, maybe an eighteen-year-old who's strumming the guitar and hoping to be where you are someday. You know that, that it uh, uh, it is. I would have no idea how to how how to do it uh, other than I, th I think uh, you know no matter what the technology is, no matter how the business might work, I think what's important is doing what's important to you. You know, if you if, if you have ideas, pursue those ideas, and and uh, uh, if you you know if you feel strongly about what you're doing, I, yeah. th I think that's the most important thing. But it's hard if it doesn't pay the bills, right? Well, it, it early is, on, it is hard. Yeah. Did you is. ever go through that? Did you ever, well, did you have any hard times, or was it pretty? Well, I, easy you know, on? my my parents sent me to school. My parents paid for my school. Uh, and so I, but I played two or three or four nights a week all through school, and and so I was able to to save my my playing money for my my gig money uh, to you know invest in tape recorders and yeah. and equipment and guitars and and uh, so so that 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 part was I, you know I, I wasn't having to support myself so that was really nice and 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 uh, in even after school when I was playing the uh, the sort of the folk club circuit around Texas, um, you know, my parents let me move home whenever I needed to. So yeah. they were nice about it. And didn't, didn't, you know, didn't complain about, didn't complain about uh, having sent me to school. And, and, right, and then you know, you're coming back home and, and yeah, living under their roof for a little Ex while. Exactly. Yeah. But if you fast forward, was there ever, I kind of asked this before, but was there ever a moment where you thought, okay, now I can do this? For the rest of my life, well, I can I can make a career out of this. I made my first trip to Nashville. Uh, my friend Nancy Griffith had invited me to sing a background vocal on a record that she was doing in Nashville, so that was my my reason to, to go. And and uh, uh, so I so I thought, well, while I'm there, I'm going to try to meet some people and yeah. see see. I, I'd gotten to a point in my life that I, I felt like I needed to figure out if music could be a job. Or if I needed to figure out if I, you know, yeah, to, to do something to do something else. Right? Yeah, it seems like there has to be a turning point at some point where you think, okay, this is it's lucrative enough. It's I can I can feed my myself right. <laughs> off this music career. And I, so so I was 26 uh, at that time, and so and it really was that you know, that kind of pivotal time. Yeah. I thought, well, I, I I need to either figure figure this out or or do something else. And and as I started making trips to Nashville, I started getting enough encouragement to. To go back every month or so, and and uh, and then the summer of 1985, 
uh, I signed a publishing deal and then signed my record deal yeah. with, with Curb and MCA. And, and then if people know your history, I mean, you take off like a shot, right? Well, it's I, it's know, less I, than 10 years later, you're getting a Grammy, I think. Well, I, 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 I worked with, a, you know, I was fortunate you know, to work with great people in, in the business. At, uh, Tony Brown at MCA, Dick Whitehouse at Curb Records, Bo Goldson at Criterion Music, all supported me. Do you consider them mentors? Did you have a mentor of any kind or? You know, uh, they, they were, they certainly were, uh, taught me about the business and, and uh, helped, helped me to, uh, figure out how to, how to, how to be. Uh, my, I, you know, when I think of mentors, I think of uh, people like Guy Clark, uh, songwriters who uh, took time to sit down with me and talk about songs and talk about writing. Guy Clark and people like Stephen Fromholtz and Willis Allen Ramsey from Texas and, and uh, Walter Hyatt and David Ball and Champ Hood from Uncle Walt's band. Mm. Uh, Jim Rooney, who produced that Nancy Griffith record and, and would let me sleep on his couch in, in Nashville. I would, I would uh, sleep on, on his couch sometimes and I had a second cousin named Tammy, whose couch I would sleep on uh, in guest, guest room. Yeah, they were. Yeah, she and her husband let me sleep in their guest room, and and uh, uh, so it was, so it made those trips to Nashville uh, possible uh, for me. You know? Yeah, you, your last album was was when 2012, right? 2012, right. Do you miss it? Do you miss producing records, or does it not matter anymore in the age of iTunes and touring? Oh no, no, I mean, I, I, and I intend to make another record. I, it was uh, 2012 was the l the last record uh, uh, on my record deal, uh, right? And uh, uh, so that fulfilled fulfilled my record deal with Curb and MCA, and so now I've I've just been trying to figure out what to do next, and and. Uh, and just you know, keep playing. Yeah. So for your fans, you might do another one. Oh, I'll do. You that. will do for, for sure. Oh, okay, yeah. good. That's good. We're glad to hear that. No, I can't stop. You can't stop. No. Well, I don't want. I mean, you know, why would you? Why would you stop? I, a, a few years ago, uh, I started uh, in, in 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 doing promotional interviews. Uh, sometimes uh, interviewers would ask me when I when I might retire, and, and I just. I, You're not old enough me. to retire. Well, it, it, it surprised <laughs> me the question, but but. Um, uh, I, you know, I finally said, well, you know, this is, I think I am retired. I've been retired the whole time. If, if, doing, <laughs> if doing something that you love to do every day, you know, is, is what you do in retirement, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. You're not old enough to retire. Just saying. What's the biggest obstacle you've encountered along the way? Uh, that's, wow, that's a really good question. The, the, you know, the, I mean, mostly uh, obstacles of my own making, you know. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything specific, but I, 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 you know, there, there is a, there's a challenge to sort of keeping everything going, but you know, once again, when you work with people who are dedicated and who are trying to help you, you know, it, uh, you can, you can make it through anything, and and uh, it's, I, 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 I've always tried to figure out what you know what success means to me, and I, and I think success really is just being able to do what you love to do being able to you know being you know being 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 successful means just being successful enough to to keep, keep to do the next thing well it's great to great to sit with you and have a drink thank you so much <laughs> cheers you're kind Kate. thanks for having me it's fun it's really fun to talk to you